There aren't a whole lot of movies out there about World War I. In fact, the first one that comes to my mind is All Quiet on the Western Front. And it's certainly one of the best, but it was released in 1930, so that was quite some time ago. Last year, Peter Jackson released They Shall Not Grow Old, a documentary that featured some amazing restored footage from World War I. That focused most on trench warfare and what it was like to be in the trenches during that time. So I was excited when I heard that director Sam Mendes would be directing a film about World War I. You might remember Mendes from directing American Beauty, which he won the Academy Award for. He more recently directed James Bond films, including Spectre and Skyfall. Now, the first thing I began to wonder when I heard that Sam Mendes was directing a film about World War I was, is this movie going to be based on a true story? I've done some research into the film, and what I discovered was that the idea for the film was inspired by a true story. It's not directly a true story. The characters in the film are mostly fictional. They're not one-to-one relationships but the story was actually inspired, the idea for the story was inspired by Sam Mendez's paternal grandfather's story. And his grandfather, Alfred Mendez, was a soldier in World War I, and it's inspired by his experience as sort of a messenger or a runner during the war. This isn't what Alfred Mendez was initially trained to do. He was born on the Caribbean island of Trinidad, and he left there for England in 1915 to join the British Army. He volunteered and he enlisted in January 1916 at the age of 19. He first served with the 1st Battalion Rifle Brigade, and he was trained as a rifleman. And then he was sent to Oisemont, not far from Dieppe in France, where he trained to be a signaler. Now, a signaler is a person who specializes in communications in the army. This meant that he would have been in charge of sort of setting up a communication infrastructure where messages could get from the front lines to the officers to the commanders, all the way up to the government. This involved messages being carried on foot, by horseback, on motorcycle, involved radio communications, and in later years, telecommunications. Now, this is before the creation of the Royal Corps of Signals, which was created in 1920 by the then Secretary of State for War, Winston Churchill. While Alfred Mendez was training to be a signaler in Oisemont, France, he had some downtime there, and in his autobiography, he talked about meeting a woman and the various exploits and sort of a passionate affair he had with her. So Alfred headed out for the Battle of Passchendaele in Belgium, which is probably a somewhat fitting name given the woman he just left and, and the intimate moments they shared. When Alfred's unit arrived at the battle, they were tasked with reclaiming the village of Poel Kapal, which is close to the Passchendaele Ridge. The village had been overtaken by the Germans. The British soldiers in Alfred's unit, they attacked in the pouring rain and they suffered significant losses. 158 of the 484 men in Alfred's battalion were either killed, wounded, or unaccounted for. The missing men in Alfred's battalion were scattered across no man's land. This is the wasteland that's left behind after a battle. In this case, it was filled with shell craters that were muddy and filled with water. And these men were taking cover in these craters. In fact, Alfred's own unit had sort of set up a base camp inside one of the shell holes. Alfred's commanding officer asked for a runner to go out and locate the positions of the men who were scattered throughout no man's land. The runner would then return back and report the locations so that the men could be rescued. Alfred volunteered to do this, and in his autobiography he said, I had done a signaling course, and although it bore little relationship to the job at hand, I felt myself under an obligation to the battalion. I volunteered. Now, this was no small task, and it came with plenty of risk. He was basically running out into an open territory where he would have been targeted by snipers, machine gunners, and could have easily been shelled. He volunteered to do this, and it took, you know, it was very fearless, took a lot of bravery, and he went out and he pinpointed the locations of numerous men, and he reported back so that they could be rescued. And it was because of Alfred that many of these men's lives were saved. Amazingly, in all his running back and forth out into no man's land, he wasn't injured. In fact, he didn't receive a scratch on him. Of his experience, he said, In spite of the snipers, the machine gunners, and the shells, 
I arrived back at C Company's shell hole without a scratch, but with a series of hair-raising experiences that would keep my grand and great-grandchildren enthralled for nights on end. We know that one of those grandchildren was director Sam Mendez, who would use his grandfather's story as inspiration for his idea for his movie 1917. Now this is where it's important to address the difference between the film and Alfred's story. The film is not about a soldier running into no man's land to pinpoint the locations of survivors. Instead, the film tells the story of two soldiers who accept a mission to deliver a message deep into enemy territory. They're trying to get word to a large unit of about 1,500 men that they're about to walk into a deadly trap. The two soldiers who act as messengers or runners in the film are Blake and Schofield, and they're portrayed by Dean Charles Chapman and George McKay. You might remember Chapman from Game of Thrones. He portrayed King Tommen, who committed suicide by jumping out of a window. In the movie, part of Blake's motivation for getting word to these soldiers that they're about to walk into a deadly trap that the Germans have waiting for them is the fact that Blake's own brother, portrayed by Richard Madden, is one of these soldiers in this unit. You might remember that Madden also starred in Game of Thrones, portraying Rob Stark. Now, even though the plot is not directly based on Alfred Mendez's story, the next question to ask, are either of the characters, Blake or Schofield, inspired by Alfred Mendez? While there's certainly not a one-to-one relationship between Alfred and either of the characters, it's certainly obvious that his experience did inspire their experiences in the film. Perhaps Alfred best lines up with Dean Charles Chapman's character, Blake, But in real life, Alfred didn't have a brother who he had to rescue from danger. As for the other characters in the film, including the British officers portrayed by Colin Firth and Benedict Cumberbatch, they also appear to be fictional. We found no evidence that they were based on real people. While 1917 doesn't directly depict Sam Mendes' grandfather Alfred's story, it looks like it will depict actual battles that he fought in. This includes the Third Battle of Ypres, which is also known as the Battle of Passchendaele, and that took place from July 31st, 1917 to November 10th, 1917. In that battle, both the British and the Germans suffered heavy losses. The Germans endured unsustainable casualties, and as a result, were pinned to Flanders. It will be enjoyable to see these and other World War I battles depicted on the big screen. And just because the plot of the movie is mostly fictional, this certainly doesn't mean that it can't capture history. I hope this video has helped to explain the true story that sort of planted the seed that grew into the film's mostly fictional plot. If you want to learn more about Alfred Mendez's story, including his time during and after the war, check out our article over on historyvershollywood.com that's linked in the description below. Until next time, hackers away, my friends. Hey.